L'Italie n'en est pas moins sauvée puisque nous avons vu récemment à la télévision française, je crois que c'était Antenne 2, qui a fait un reportage sur les retraités italiens qui ont perdu toute une partie de leur retraite dans les banques, les banques qui ont acheté des produits toxiques. Et c'était vraiment émouvant parce que c'est une partie. Donc, problème reste entièrement posé, je crois, à Mme Fornero. Et nous avons beaucoup de points communs dans ce contexte extrêmement difficile budgétaire. Merci beaucoup, Mme Fornero, d'être avec nous. On vous écoute avec beaucoup de plaisir et beaucoup d'attention. Merci beaucoup. Ça marche. Bonjour à tous. Euh, je veux avant tout remercier de l'invitation. C'est un plaisir et un honneur pour moi d'être ici dans ce pays, dans ce pays qui est euh, charmant et très dynamique et que je pense peut être un exemple pour toute l'Afrique. Euh, et maintenant, je m'excuse, je suis désolée, mais mon français, ce n'est pas euh, tellement fluide de me permettre de tenir une conversation euh, en français. Et alors, euh, je préfère euh, euh, passer dans, en anglais et je m'excuse vraiment. Euh, comme italien, je, je sais que je devrais parler le français mieux que l'anglais, mais euh, vous savez que la, la langue des économistes, c'est l'anglais et on a euh, toujours la possibilité de parler l'anglais et un peu moins le français. Mais j'ai promis que la prochaine fois que vous m'inviterez, je parlerai français. Voilà. Uh, I've been a minister in Italy. I just want to tell you this. Um, I've been a university professor all my life. I've worked on savings, household savings, uh, pensions, uh, social insurance, labor, and then uh, at a certain moment I was asked to participate in a government. It was, uh, as I, I will tell you, a very difficult moment for Italy and I accepted because uh, the person who asked me was a person whom I entirely trusted. He was, uh, he had been a, a commissioner, European commissioner uh, for the the market, internal market at the EU, Professor Mario Monti, and I thought it was my duty to say yes. But uh, I did not expect what followed in terms of personal, I would say, endurance, and also the difficulty to communicate to people, which I think it's the most important thing for someone who is in government. But it's terribly difficult, particularly when you don't have, let's say, a political party, or you don't have uh, uh, a trade union supporting you, or you don't have, uh, you, you are alone somehow, okay? Uh, so my presentation will be first uh, I, I will try to be very brief because I know that you are already tired because the speeches before were quite dense. Um, I will be brief, but I will try to say something which is not only from my own, let's say, study as an academic, but it's also something that I learned, or at least I hope I learned, from my experience in government. Okay, so I will tell you something about uh, social security, what is social security, and uh, what is the necessity to change it, because maybe you are still in the position to design the system. But we, and most of Europe, were in the position to reform. When you design, you can increase. You can increase uh, 
the title of your la généralisation de la couverture. You can increase, but when you reform, most of the time you have to cut. And I will tell you why we had to cut. But first of all, I want to tell you something about uh, the pension. What is a pension? Because there is a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, misunderstanding about what a pension and a pension system is. Then I will say something about reforms. Why reforming pension is so difficult? And I've heard that uh, there is a general strike here in this country because of the reform that has been just uh, passed. I will say something about uh, our experience and possibly some very, very cautious thought about Morocco because as someone said before, every country has specificities that have to be taken in mind. Okay, a pension. A pension, I want to show something of this graph. It's a very, very famous graph in economics. And by the way, it was, it's the graph illustrating something that uh, earned uh, the Nobel Prize for economics to the only Italian that has gained it. Uh, uh, and is Franco Modigliani. This is the life cycle. A pension is something for the individual, for the family, I would say, for the household. And it's something that has to do with the life cycle of people. What do you mean by life cycle? Imagine that, uh, look at the horizontal line. Imagine that you start with the adult life. So what happens before, it's in the family, okay, within the family. You start uh, and typically you enter the labor market. When you are an adult, you leave education and you enter the labor market. And if you are lucky, you earn an income. That is the flat line above, the, the highest flat line. You earned your income until you are old, and you retire. Then you don't have any income from work. This is for the typical uh, pe person who has to work in life, who is not uh, someone who is not an aristocratic and can live on rent, okay? So he has to work. But then there, there comes the period when there is retirement, there is no work any longer and no labor income. So what happens typically? It means that you save part of your labor income so you don't consume it all and that consumption is the red line there. You see it's lower than income during the active life. And then this creates wealth, what we call the pension wealth. And you see the triangle, the, pen, the wealth increases. And when you retire, the, you start drawing on your pension wealth. You are paid a pension and then it goes until you die. So a pension is not just an ordinary financial pro, uh, product, it's not something uh, well, it's something that insurance company can pay, but it's something different because it has to give older people the possibility to consume. And of course, we could leave every person to arrange his own life cycle plan. We could say, okay, it's your problem, so you save, but it's not the way it goes. Not even in economies where the market is highly considered, like the US. They think that everything that can be done in the market, it's the best way. But they have a social security system. So it means that even where the market is important, there is something which we call an institution, a public institution, which is there to help people to solve this problem. That is uh, what the social security is about. And if it is public, uh, it is compulsory. So people don't ask you, do you want to participate in the social security? No. 
they say you have to. As a worker, you have to pay. In Italy, each worker pay 33% of the salary of the wage for pension, just for pensions, not for other like health, no, for pensions, okay? So it's one third of your labor income that is paid compulsory. Now, another thing, it is public. I heard before the difficulties about reserves. Since it is public, it does not need to be based on reserves, on money that is accumulated. No, it can be differently organized. And I want you to understand this because it's very important and it's at the basis of social security. It is not important that you have reserves, financial reserves. But it is important that you have a generational contract. What does it mean? It means that you are the active workers, for example, because you are in the first part of your life before retirement. So you work, you are the workers, okay? And they are the retirees, sorry for this. They are the retirees. And I am the state pension agency or social security. So you pay contribution compulsorily and I use the proceeds to pay for their pension. This is called the pay as you go. And this is the typical financing of pension system that it goes in Europe. Okay? In Europe it's like this, but also in America. The they have reserves, but not enough. So it's a generational contract, okay? Now, things go well until you are quite numerous with respect to them, okay? You are all lucky, you all work. It's another very important thing. You are young and you have an occupation, you have a job, so you are paid, and so you can pay and they can have generous uh, pension because I receive your contribution and I pay their pension. Now imagine that something happened, something which is uh, demographic change. Demographic change, it means that uh, it comes, uh, the time passes by and then it comes uh, a year or a period where you are not all workers, but they are the workers. And you are all the retirees. So the situation somehow is completely reversed. This is what is called the old age dependency ratio. And I will show you something of this demographic change. Now, can you imagine that you have to pay for all their pensions? So you have to pay a very high payroll taxes. Now I tell you one thing. In Italy we had many reforms. But if you ask how much would have the workers to pay for uh, having enough money to pay for the pensions, I told you before that the payroll taxes tax rate is now 33%, but it should have been 60%, 60%, can you imagine? There is no possibility, because uh, that is part of the wage, part of the cost of labor. And so the difference was uh, either on debt, public debt, or on taxes, general taxes. And if you have to pay for pensions, you cannot spend for investment, for research, and so on and so on. That is the main reason why we say, I'm sorry for the translator, for the interpreter, I, I just uh, go on because, uh, uh, because otherwise I have no time. But I wanted to explain why it is important uh, to, uh, why reforms are needed. Reforms are needed because uh, 
the demographic change, but also the economic problems. If you have fewer workers and they have difficulties in finding a job, not like the nice graph we saw before where you have a nice income which is continuous. No, nowadays in Europe, most of the young people only have precarious jobs. They work one year and they do not work next year. And they have a low income. So how is this possible to maintain? So there are uh, demographic and economic problems. And these are structural problems, structural ones, okay, that you have to face with the reform. There is a third element that is uh, for sustaining reforms. A third element is political intervention. Now imagine this, uh, that the situation is almost what I have described and I am a politician and for politicians it is of course uh, easier to promise something than to say to people we have to cut your benefits. Who is the politician who wants to cut benefits? There is nobody. They prefer to say, I'm going to increase your benefits, because that is popular. By the way, this is the reason why we, a technocratic government, were called in in 2011, because the reforms we were to provide were certainly not popular with people. Okay, but then there is a tendency for Poli political parties to favor the people that are present today than the people that are present tomorrow. So if there is this intergenerational compact or contract, what happens is that the politicians have a natural tendency to favor present generations instead of future generations. And this creates a problem. Now, I want to show you something um, of the just this. What I mean by reform, I said a pension system, I characterized the pension system. I said the pension system is a very complex public institution that puts together not only all the present generations but also the future one. Because the future one have to participate whether they like it or not. They can migrate, okay, but if they stay, they have to participate, okay? Now, when I, I said that there are problems, demographic, economic, and also political problems, now, I would like to give an interpretation of reforming a pension system, which is not obvious, but which is very important for people to understand why it is like this. Consider again this graph. And here you have on the one side what we call sustainability of pension system. You understand by now what I mean by sustainability, financial sustainability. It means if you promise too much, then you have little sustainability. If you promise everything to everybody, the system is really not sustainable, okay? So the more generous you, ha you are, the less, gen uh, the less sustainable is the system. And you see there is what economists call a trade-off. What is a trade-off? If you are less generous, you become more sustainable. If you cut pensions, if you increase retirement age, your system becomes sustainable. And so this is what people do not like. If you are saying to me that you just cut my pensions, and maybe you do this because of uh, Angela Merkel, or because of austerity, or because, of, uh, uh, because you want to save the banks, people are really angry. But there is another possibility to present reforms, and it is this one. Look at this. It's not a trick. No. But it is the essence of reform. And mind you, is exactly what it is in the title. La généralisation de la couverture sociale, 
un investissement générateur de croissance. The key word is générateur de croissance. What do you see here? When you do a reform which improves the design of the system, you have a better architecture, you have a better incentive structure, I will make example of this, uh, then you have a better trade-off. Look, you can have the same uh, higher generosity for the same sustainability. If the reform is done well, you are not simply asking people for sacrifices per se. You are asking people to sacrifice something today in order to have something higher tomorrow. That is uh, the meaning of social investment, of a reform that is a social investment. How do we do this? Oh, it's uh, relatively easy. For example, we had a system that encouraged people to exit as soon as possible. Just exit. Exit the labor market, retire. Is this sensible? No. You have to encourage people to work longer, provided they are healthy. Because uh, there is no sense uh, in uh, allowing people to retire at the age of 40. We had this craziness uh, for women in the public sector. They could retire after 15 years of work. I know many, many of my friends have retired years and years ago on a relatively generous pension, but who pays for this? The young and future generations. That's why it's not sustainable. Is this uh, efficient? No. Another thing, you have to have a pension formula that encourage people to work on a regular job, not informal job, not moonlight jobs. No, this is crazy again. So the message, and this we have adopted, imagine that you tell people, okay, look, whatever you save for your pension, each euro or each, uh, um, what is the money here? Iram. Okay. Uh, it's that you save is for your own pension. Look, we register everything here. Each euro, it's here. So if you lose, if somebody is saying to you, okay, I'll put some of the money in your pocket and we both save, you say no because this will damage terribly you in the future because your pension depends on all the money that you have put in this pension account. We? We? Pardon? Oui, c'était pour donner les messages, les messages de ce qu'est une réforme. La réforme, oh non, je, je, alors, back to English, sorry, but it's, it's easier for me to go back to English. This is the interpretation of a reform. Now, I want to show you just the Italian population. Think of this. This is the Italian population in, six, in 71. This you may take, it's more or less the same for Euro, Europe. Hmm? Look at this. This is now. And this is in 2000. Okay. Look at this. Can you see the change? Where are the young? Can you see? This is the so-called inverted pyramid. And when you do a pension reform, is at this that you have to look, not at past, not at what we call acquired rights, is at the future of the country that you have to look. And what I want to say is exactly this. This is the situation that described Italy in 2011 when our government technocratic was called in. Do you see Italy? You see Italy on the edge, okay? Ready to fall. And you see the euro is just over Italy. What does it mean? It means that a collapse of European sovereign, of uh, Italian sovereign debt would have uh, meant a collapse of the euro. 
that was uh, what uh, most, uh, let's say, uh, well, the financial market wanted to realize because they wanted uh, a collapse of the euro and there were many people. So that's why we had to do a reform. I had to prepare the reform in 20 days. You mentioned that I cried only two tears, very just two. But after 20 days of work, in a ministry that I did not know before because I came from my university, 20 days, a difficult reform that you had to explain to people. And it was very difficult. And what I want to tell you, and it's my message, and I'm going to finish, is avoid finding yourself in a situation which is financial crisis because everything taken in a, every decision taken in an emergency is much more costly for people and is much more difficult to explain to people and do you imagine myself explaining the reform has uh, an economic investment, a social investment in the future when the situation is like this and you don't know where, whether next day you have the money to pay for public employees, for hospitals, for school, for everything that is public and for pension themselves. So we did the reform and the reform is still there. Um, there is a lot of uh, unhappiness about it because we asked people to work longer. And you would say, what do you regret more? One thing, the difficulty of talking to people, of explaining, because I did not have a political party, I am a university professor, what they call a technocrat, and of course, when the political parties were in government again, they had no interest in saying, oh, they have more or less done a good job, now let's continue. No, they had all the interest to say they have done a terrible job. They have done, they just have, uh, uh, let's say, done austerity measures. Can you imagine that you can give a positive message to people when you just recall the word austerity? Why should people have to live in austerity. So my message to you is if you are going to have a pension reform which is going to make it the system universal, that is very, very important. Be transparent. Try to tell people that this is for the future that this is a social investment, that this is really a, uh, an element to support croissance, economic growth, which is also social growth. Uh, social security is not just a system to spend money, to spend public money, possibly to gain some political favor. No, it's something for society and it can be a very important element for the growth of society, which is not just economic growth, but it is uh, social growth. So this is my message to you and I uh, wish you all the best with your reform, but for your country and for your people.